what up, what up, what up? I am back. Yeah, happy Sunday, happy, happy Sunday. Get up in here. Get up in here. What it do, what it do, what it do. Yes. Beautiful people, beautiful people, beautiful people. Welcome back to another Zap exclusive. Okay. It's Sunday. How are we feeling today? How are we feeling? What are we drinking? What are we eating? Who's still eating leftovers? Who had a great Thanksgiving? First of all, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> like, it's a lot to talk about. Yes. It's a lot to talk about. But today, we're about to get into some things with the legendary Miss Stacey Francis. Yes. Okay. So, if you don't know who Stacey Francis is, she is an amazing vocalist. Yes. Okay. Been on Broadway. Um, been a backup vocalist in for many singers, Shaka Khan, Madonna, the list goes on and on. A finalist on America's Got Talent? Yes! Come on, the list goes on and on. We're going to get into so many things with her. I actually see she's here. Stacey Francis is in the building. <laughs> okay. Um, they saying what's in the cup? What's in the cup is some juice that's blessed by Jesus. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're about to get into the show. We're about to get into some things. And listen, if you guys haven't seen my project, Intruder Volume 2, it's out now. Okay? <laughs> Intruder Volume 2 is out now. <laughs> and on my page, Intruder Volume 3, the teaser drops tomorrow at 8 p.m. Yes. Okay. Make sure you stay tuned. I got some dope, dope heat. I got about 15 of the dopest dancers in New York City in the project. I said what I said. All right. But let's get into some real things that matter here. Miss Stacey Francis. Let's get her on the line. What's going on, everybody? I see y'all all in here. What up? What up? What up? <laughs> Listen, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful Sunday. It's a little rain though. Oh, there she go. Hi. Hey. I love the hand clap. Listen, listen, well, we love you. Welcome to the show, Stacey. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you for asking me to come on. This is such an honor. Of course. Listen, first of all, tell the people who you are and what you do. Let's start there. Okay. <laughs> first of all, you did a great job um, introducing me. My name is Stacey Francis. I am a singer. I've also done some acting in my career, but mostly singing. I love singing. And um, I did sing on Broadway for many years. I also sang in the West End, which is where I sang with Shaka Khan. I didn't sing backup for her. Um, I do love her. I would sing backup for her. But I sang starring in a show called Mama, I Want to Sing. She played my godmother. We did a soundtrack um, on EMI Records at the time. And so I love Shaka. She's, she's, you know, definitely very special to me. I was very inspired by her. I had a really phenomenal time with her. And I did sing back up when I was 17 years old for Aretha Franklin. I sang back up for Madonna. Okay. Um, when, okay. I was in, when I was in Mama Wanna yes. Sing, um, with Shaka, Prince came to the show several times because he loved her very much. And so he flew me to Minneapolis and I sang with him and recorded with him. And he also had me singing in a club in London called the Emporium where he would come and sing and do private concerts after his big Wembley show, he would do private shows. And I sang with him and there is a recording of that out there as well. And um, I have sang concerts for Tom Cruise and I was a praise and worship minister for Will and Jada's church for two years in LA. And what else? Um, I did two albums with Warner Brothers Records with a girl group called Ex Girlfriend back in the nineties. Yeah, you know what? You giving us you giving us to us all too straight. Hold on. Yes. Okay, sorry. We're gonna, to, <laughs> we're gonna have to pause you and rewind you because we want to get into this whole journey of everything that you've done and everything, all the different pockets you were able to accomplish. First yes. of all, I gotta give out a shout out to the Queen Melba Moore is in the building. Oh, she is. I love Miss Melba Moore. Wow. Yes. 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 Such a phenomenal vocalist. Phenomenal, phenomenal vocalist. Phenomenal. We have to bow down to the queen. She's definitely a queen vocalist. Absolutely. And someone that I listened to when I was growing up. I really love her voice. Melba Moore is that girl and still is that girl at 80 she years can old. Sing. Still she can it. sing. Still doing it. All yes. right. So let's get into to, to you can sing. Okay, now. Thank you. Let, let's, talk, <laughs> let's talk about it, Tracy. So how did you even get introduced into the game as a singer? We know you have a heavy church influence, and we know you're yes. from Brooklyn, New York. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we got right now. I'm in front of my own accent because I just left home. I was home for about a month in Brooklyn, and it just you know when you're home around your family, it gets my, my accent got thicker again. Um, but I am from Brooklyn, New York. I grew up in the church. Um, my uncle and my aunt are both pastors. My godmom, who raised me, is a pastor. Um, she was the assistant pastor. My family has a church for the last, um, I think, 58 or 59 years in, in Brooklyn and Queens. 
And so I grew up singing in the choir, you know, um, being inspired. Um, Sharon Jones from Sharon Jones and the Dead Queens, God bless her heart, she, um, her soul, she, she was my choir director when I was growing up. So I don't know if you guys know her, but she's, she was very famous. She's a very great singer. She's my choir director. And so I grew up in that, in that space. You know how it is when you grow up around music and you're singing every Sunday, every day. I was in, I literally grew up in a brownstone above the church. The church was downstairs and I grew up upstairs. Oh. So I couldn't escape the music. It was all around me. <laughs> So you was hearing music also, even when you didn't want to hear it, you was yeah, it's true. That's <laughs> it's so true. It's true. It's it true. And I was telling someone the other day, you don't realize it, but when you grow up in the church singing, you immediately you not only gain the vocal confidence and the the, the ability to sing, but you also get stage presence. It's a very mm -hmm. funny thing because you're up there with the choir and my uncle was the pastor. So I would sometimes be, you know, a singer before he, before he did his preaching. He would take me to be his, you know, that I would do the sermon song before he preached and I would travel around the country with him. And so it was developing a stage presence that I didn't know that I had until I auditioned for Mama I Want to Sing when I was like 16 years old, um, which was one of the, which is the lo longest running black um, off-Broadway musical in history, um, when I auditioned for that show, I didn't realize that I had already had kind of some background in my training, just in the church, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, so that I kind of skipped, but that's kind of where it started. Well, you know what? I feel like that that's such a dope testimony because I, I was gonna ask you this. I'm gonna jump ahead and ask you what you think about singers today, even the people that they consider like really, really good vocalists today. And yeah. That, that soul that's missing. And I feel like your generation um, or the generation of singers before have a yeah. head church influence. And I feel like it's missing today. What, what do you think about um, just the soul singers and vocalists of, of today's generation? Well, it's very interesting. I mean, I was listening to Jasmine Sullivan earlier. I just think she's a phenomenal vocalist. Um, so we do have some in this generation that do represent very well great singers. So I won't minimize that. But I will say um, that I do work with singers sometimes. And I do, as I mentioned, find that many singers don't have just the training. You know, when I was working with Prince, he said to me one time, and I always say this to my daughter, like, be careful who your teachers are, like, really take heed to who your teachers are, where did they come from? What is what's happening with the teacher that is teaching you and passing it on to you, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a very important element because they're passing on skills to you that they somewhere they got from somewhere, you know, and then the other person got, you know what I mean? So it's like a train mm -hmm. of events, right? So um, I don't want to minimize, uh, minimize singers today. I think there's a lot of great young singers, but I do believe that what could be missing is that soulful experience in the church, in the choir. I mean, you know, when you look at the great like Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, when you look at these singers and you ask them where they come from, they started in the church and, and, and they did have that foundational singing. And because when you think about someone's gift um, and the ability to deliver that gift, it's because they did it so many times over and over and over and over, right? And then it created this certainty and this confidence in them because they were able to do it so many times that they walk confidently in their gift. And I think that's what you get when you, it doesn't have to be, let's say a Christian church, for example, it could just be, just, I don't know, just the ability to go and sing every day and get the music in your head and where's your platform. And for us, it was the church. And I think it, it is an inspiring place, an inspiring place to be, obviously for many reasons, even spiritually. But I think that that's kind of what we could be missing when you talk about soul um, tapping into that thing you know because obviously you could have great singers but are they anointed that's a different that's a different mm. conversation right okay. the anointing is a difference as well so it, it's just so many elements and so many layers i mean i i remember at certain points in my career where i kind of lost track of myself musically and it was because of where i was psychologically and where i was spiritually you understand? So there's all these elements that come into play with vocals and how you deliver them and where you deliver a song from. And I believe that that's something else that singers are missing as well, because if you're not tapped in spiritually and really grounded, where are you singing from and what are you singing for? Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So we feel that as the listener. Why? What is your message? What is this message about? Did you are you really heartbroken? Are you just singing the lyric? Does but let it me mean ask something you, to you? 
But let me ask you this then, Stacey. The mm -hmm. record labels, what do you think that they want us to hear as consumers? Why aren't they pushing the soulful singers that could really touch an anointing on the people through through the sound waves? Why aren't they pushing those artists? <laughs> well, then you get me into a little bit of a trouble because um, I'm not sure how, how, how much people want to go into a spiritual conversation, but I'm willing to go there. When you, when you talk about um, the record labels and what they're willing to play, I mean, it's just not, it's not about just R&B music or soul music. When you listen to the hip hop lyrics that they're pushing, you know, I met with some, some, some big producers last week that I, that I did a really phenomenal song with. Um, and I won't throw them under the bus and say who they are at the moment. But, you know, I do know, for example, that you do have people in the hip hop industry that don't want to sing those lyrics. You know, this this music producer said to me that he took an, an artist that came to him that did a really inspiring hip hop record, like a record that was real, believe it or not, that was really, it was hip hop and it was amazing. And they were able to actually, he was able to sing where he came from and talk about his journey and the heart of what it is to live in the black community and, and from a place of, courage and strength and what it means to to have the tenacity to get through that kind of lifestyle right that was his that was those were his lyrics but when they took it to the record label to get him signed the record label executive said they didn't want that mm. right they wanted him to sing that other lyric the dark lyrics about whatever you know that you already know i don't even have to say it i don't want to <laughs> but you understand so when you when you talk about what record executives want to convey to the community and to the world, you go into a conversation of why is the media pushing darkness? Not just why is the music producers pushing darkness? Why is the media, why does the media push darkness? Why does the, why does hip hop big artists, why do they push darkness instead of light, right? And I'm gonna give you my own interpretation of that. Now, I was someone who fell into a conversation She's 77. Oh, Melba Moore wanted me to let you guys know that she's 77, not 80. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Alex, told me to tell you that. Melba Moore, I got you, baby. I got you. You are not 80. But I'm going to tell you something. If you was 100, 180, we would still love you. Okay. Um, so, so, um, Thank you for the follow. I, I'm definitely going to follow you back. Thank you. I love you. Um, so basically what I want to say on that note, okay, and I'll get very transparent in this conversation, there were many years because of my my own disappointment and, and, and some of the pain that I went through in my career and because of the disappointments and because I ran into people that broke my heart that said they were going to do something and they didn't do it or because, you know, I remember going up to Epic Records and right there about to sign a deal and then it didn't happen. And, you know, you get very disappointed. You have these purposes that you want to achieve and they you fail at them and you're like, why? And you're asking, constantly asking, why God? Why God? And I remember a very... Um, poignant point in my life um, from the time that I lost the X Factor through, I would say, 2016, 2017, where it was very dark. I was, it was very dark. I was angry. I was, I was always lashing out. I, and I would sing even off key, like things weren't right with me. Like I just psychologically, mentally, I was not where I should be, right? Mm -hmm. And I had to really take a step back and sort of shut down a little bit and look and look within myself and say okay what's happening and get some help and really look at myself spiritually on what it is that i wanted to sing about why was i so angry like really self-heal right and then i met my my life partner who i'm with now and he's so beautiful and i remember writing that down on a piece of paper what i wanted that to be like what i wanted in a life partner who i wanted my daughter to be raised by and, and the father like i just I just remember requesting that from the universe, right? And things started happening and changing as I got less angry and as I had started to communicate more light to the world. And then I started thinking, okay, let me just go back to my roots. I grew up in the church. I know what it's like to to tap in and I and I really believe in a higher power than myself. Let me go back to that and let me stop being angry because the more angry that I get with th th those people, the more that I'm looking crazy, right? So I'm just like, okay, let me stop doing that. And so when I stopped doing that, my music, the lyrics of my music started to change. My purpose started to really show up. I, I wasn't singing anymore to try to be famous or try to make a lot of money. I was now singing to really convey a message of hope to people, which is what I was supposed to be doing in the first place, mm -hmm. right? So I bring this up because 
I, I wrote a song called We Stand Together and I started a nonprofit organization during COVID and I fed about 150,000 people and I really started working, working in my purpose, okay? And when I started doing that, my singing got better. Physically, mm -hmm. I got better. Emotionally, I got better. My relationships got better. I started pulling in better friends. I started pulling in more opportunities. I started attracting to me more of an ability to be a beautiful artist that people look up to that can be inspired by me. All of my songs that I've written so far, when you hear the songs, I, I have four new songs and I'll send them, I'll send them to you confidentially because I want you to hear them. Move people. They move people to not only dance, but they move people to believe in themselves, to know that they can make it because unfortunately, all the negativity that we are feeding into, the, no offense to reality shows, I was a star on one. It doesn't help us. It doesn't help us. Like we gotta move into a place of light so that we can be light, attract light. All of when you talk about music industry, forget about record labels. Create your own record label. Start mm. your own record yeah. label. Start your own publishing company. Okay. Put your music out that you believe in. That you believe in. That you stop depending on someone else. Start being more positive in your career and in your life and in the things that you want. And I stopped doing that. And when I stopped doing that, my life got better. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I was Listen. like the longest run on sentence ever. I'm so sorry. Listen, you gave it to a straight no chaser. Listen, she's dropping gems and she's giving them to y'all for free. <laughs> okay? All right. I, I really Ring the bell. Guys... <laughs> okay? Uh, so be zapped in today because Stacey's really breaking it down for you. Gave us such a mouthful. I love, so I love zapped in, by the way. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, you know, you've given us a lot, and I feel like what I've taken away the most, and I feel like there were so many messages, but manifestation and just the energy you put out. So no matter, you know, how anointed, how much of a vocalist, no matter no matter the energy you put out, it's going to always come back to you. So if it, it does. Form, it does. And sadly, if it's dark energy, it's going to be dark energy that comes back. Absolutely. It's facts. Yeah. It's facts. And if it's in the form of a career... And you may get the career that you want. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. There's this guy. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna um shout him out and then I'm gonna tag him and let him know I shouted him out. This guy, his name is Billy Carson. He has an Instagram page called Forbidden Knowledge. And I've been following his page for a while. And I have to tell you something. This guy is so on point with a lot of the research that he's done and the stuff that he studied. And I really, really like um very much his um his approach to life and he was talking I, I saw him on a video yesterday and i'm just bringing this up because of this and he said i i command life when i when i when i he said yes i pray but i command it when i'm on an airplane about to go somewhere i don't say oh i hope i get there i will get there i i will make it safely i'm healthy i'm strong because a lot of times with singers especially in artists we get so so sad and when we don't feel like our opportunity is coming we feel so broken and it's just like you know what i am a star i am loved by the people yes. i am you know what i mean like and when you walk in your life like that you walk confidently you know that you're a child of god you know you're made in this image you know that you are a god yourself walking mm. in a walk that is i mean intent look what are we here for what are we here for we're here to help each other we're here to inspire each other you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, get to that. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. There's so many platforms. Look at the platform you've created for yourself. You've done a phenomenal job. I've looked at your platform. I'm looking at what you're doing. You're inspiring people. You're interviewing people. You got your stuff across. You're not waiting for some company to come save you. Okay. Like, you're creating no. these things, okay. right? You're creating these things for you. So you got Melbourne Horn. You got people that, beautiful people. I saw your followers, really prestigious people that are really cool like following you you've had phil i saw um you had phil thornton I, I was produced on a tv show by phil he's a great guy you know what i mean like it's just you're creating that for yourself you didn't wait for somebody to say oh you know reach out to stacy you reached out to me yourself right so it's like this is our responsibility as artists as creators to create what we want i can't sit and wait for a record label to come sign me anymore it's like okay i'm gonna start my own record label you know what i mean like it's just i can't wait for some producer to say okay i'm gonna produce you now i'm gonna call it my friends i have stanley brown one of them who is a phenomenal um producer who produced yolanda adams um uh, has Kai walker karen clark sheared kiara sheared he produced a song for me last week i'm not waiting for these people no more to be like oh you're okay i'm gonna prove you not prove myself okay, okay? Yes, in the name of Jesus. 
You understand? Uh, okay. So it's like it, for so many so for so many years, I didn't I didn't believe it. Like I read one of the questions you wrote to me um, that you said you wanted to ask me about. When did I think that I could really say? You wrote S A N G, and I thought that was so cute and it's sad that I for many years I didn't think I could. Even when I was on the X Factor, I was like mm -hmm. about myself. So crazy. After you people crazy. giving you standing ovations. And After I had done, what the craziest part is, this is how crazy it was. I didn't even, and I was sitting next to Will Smith because um, Dwayne Martin and Tisha Martin, who they were married at the time, they had a massive party at their house. They invited all the Black Hollywood, Cedric the Entertainer, uh, Tisha, like I said, Tisha Campbell, like all these massive, Will was there. And I didn't, and I had done the show, I had filmed the show in May, and it was airing in September. I had all these people in the house, and Dwayne Martin, who was a big believer in my singing, big fan of my voice. He invited all these people, all the people he knew in Hollywood, he had them come to his big mansion. And I'm sitting next to Will Smith, and I'm watching myself, and I see L L.A. Reid like, yeah, and Simon Cowell clapping and standing up. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I, had, I was standing there on that stage, and I didn't, I didn't remember. Hmm that they had reacted that way. I knew I got the yeses. I knew it was overwhelming, but I didn't, I didn't, I still was so hard on myself when I walked up that stage, like, did I do okay? Like, that is crazy, right? And that is what we do to ourselves. We stop ourselves. Because you take, when you were three, four, five years old, you probably thought, I'm cute, I'm good, right? No, you were like, people would be like, you're so cute, you'd be like, I know. And then as you went to school, as you got around other artists, as you got around other people, people started giving you a little bit of like, hmm, she all right. They all right. Now you have to understand, I grew up in New York. There was phenomenal singers around me, phenomenal. And I was always comparing myself to them, waiting for some approval. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. Don't look for it. Don't look for approval from everybody else. That's a lack of integrity on your part. Follow your own integrity. Know you are great. Know what you have to give is important. Know what you have to say is important. Know what you have to sell is worthy. Like, yeah. let's stop making ourselves less than to, to make people like us. Because they ain't going to like you anyway. Okay. Okay. okay? I understand. So if they love you, they love you. If you got something to give, they going to love you. If they don't like you and they hating on you, they going to hate on you anyway. There's nothing you could do about it. Just keep shining, baby. That's it. Keep shining. And you know what? You've, you've built a, a great career for yourself, Stacey. You should be definitely proud. And I want to take a trip down memory lane. I even saw somebody in here that said ex-girlfriend fan forever. Oh, thank forever. you so much. So, That's so sweet. Definitely not. Let's get into how you even got into a group because you're just a powerhouse vocalist. So thank how you. did you even see yourself in a group and how did it work out when you were part of the group? Okay, that goes back to the lack of self-esteem thing, and I can stand by myself and sing. Um, <laughs> but also, the group was incredible. Okay, so let me tell you. So there was a paper, there was a newspaper in New York City called Backstage. And, um, back. okay, Backstage, right? So right now it's digital. And um, back then, um, it was, it, we would get it every Thursday. We would go to the city, and we would get this magazine. It was this newspaper, it was called Backstage. And a friend of mine saw a mom I want to sing in the newspaper, it had been running for, I think, 10 years by the time I got into it, or maybe a little bit. Yeah, at least 10 years. Um, so he was like, you got to go audition for this show. And I was like, I had never auditioned. I had done play, school plays, high school. I'd been singing. And I was like, OK. So um, I went and I auditioned, and I got in, and I was the lead. I didn't even know I could. Honestly, I sang alto. I don't know if any singers understand. I don't know if many people understand this. But there's ranges, you know, singing ranges. I sang alto in the choir. For many years, I had some soprano stuff that I did in high school. But when I went to this audition, they had me singing notes on the piano that I didn't even know I could sing at 16. I was like a color mature soprano at five octaves and I didn't even know because I'd only been operating like this little bit. So they kept going up the piano to see if I could sing the the not, the high notes of the Mama Wanna Sing um, theme song. If you go to YouTube, you hear that Stacey Francis, Mama Wanna Sing, you hear me singing the high notes on that song. It's like those Mariah Carey high notes, right? And I was like, okay. And I was like, yeah. So they, they booked me. I got into the show. And then somebody in the show referred me to the audition for ex-girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So they had already been together. And Full Force had signed them. You know Yvette Noel Shore, who is the publicist for Beyonce? Are you familiar with her? Mm -hmm. Yvette Noel Shore. Okay, Yvette Noel Shore has been the publicist for Beyonce since back in 
back when they were in Columbia, Destiny's Child. So um, Yvette um, was the one that brought Full Force together with ex-girlfriend at the time. By the way, I'm familiar with, I'm familiar with Full Force because I used to be yeah. with Lisa. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, there you go. Okay, so right. you know the family then. Okay, so... Um, so I got the audition. I went to the audition, and they loved me, and that was it. And then they took they took me to L.A. before we got the record deal. We, they took me to L.A. and I met Beanie Medina, who manages um, Jennifer Lopez, and he signed me when I was seventeen years old. Okay. Yeah. It's so like that's that how that part of the group. That seventeen. Yeah, I was in the group. But but some people don't even get to see that at no age. You know, you already got signed at seventeen. Like just think about what you were walking into already at such a young age. You just could yeah. that. You know, so you, you already knew you had a big old voice and you obviously knew your purpose was insane, even though you may not think you, your voice was as good. But obviously, you still allowed God to guide you where you needed to go. You know yes, what I'm saying? yes, yes. I have so to I, say, when you say that, I was very tapped in. I, I was, when you say I allowed God to use me, I, I definitely was very tapped in. All my life, I was always tapped in. Even even in my dark moments, I was very tapped in. I, I definitely believe that um, we're not alone. I'm not a believer of that. I I do believe that we we there's there's a bigger game. There's a bigger game going on. And if you just think that you're just a human being, then you're lost because we are spiritual beings having a human experience, mm -hmm. not human beings having a spiritual one. We are spiritual beings first. Absolutely. Okay. So I do want to shout out somebody named Amy here. Hey, Amy. Okay. So I just had to do that. <laughs> all right, what up, Amy? Welcome to Zap Exclusive. <laughs> all right. So then now, all right. So now, ex girlfriends. Yeah. Um, and then now, you were a part of that for me like five years. You guys were apart. Oh, my ex God. Um, I was with ex girlfriend from. I was with them for eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. Um, yeah. But y'all was some y'all y'all hit number five on the billboard. Like Yeah, y all, y all number three. That. Oh, you know, oh, my, okay. She said correction. <laughs> all right. Number three. She said <laughs> no. Okay. Number three. Um, yeah, we won Billboard Top 100. We were Billboard Top 10. Um, we toured the country many, many times doing radio promo and lead um opening for major artists. I remember opening for um uh, performing with Naughty by Nature, Salt and Pepper. Queen Latifah, we did some shows with them. We had the same agent. Back then it was called Famous Artists. I don't even know if they exist anymore. <laughs> um, so that was, we toured, we did Madison Square Garden. We did the biggest venues around the country. Um, we, we, we actually did Soul Train twice. We did, we, the first one we did with Boys to Men when they first came out and they had their first album. We did that with them. And um, we did a song with R. Kelly at the time um, called, um, Oh my God, I can't remember, but I remember seeing it on um, Instagram the other day. Someone said, this sounds like an R. Kelly song. And no, the person said in the comments, they were like, why is this person trying to bite off R. Kelly? I was like, they're not. <laughs> he was actually, it was him. It was his, we worked with him. And I have to yeah. say, you know, um, I had some, I had some interesting moments in the industry and, and very fascinating um, encounters. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we would you know we were there when R. Kelly was dating Aaliyah. Oh, you know around that time he was, but I think he was really in love with her. I really do. So, oh, cause you know what, this is early. This is early nineties. Yeah, early nineties. Um, the second album came out in nineteen ninety four. Ninety four. Gotcha. Um, the, the earlier story is like definitely very tragic, but still so iconic. Um, very. And Tom. How um, beautiful. She was so beautiful. Super, super beautiful. Very and beautiful. I, let me ask you, she doesn't have a, like a strong, soulful voice. She's more like, uh, like a spiritual a vibe. vibe and a vibe, like the way she sings. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is what is your take on just being an artist and what it takes to be an artist? Like, do, do you have to have strong vocals or do you have to know how to sing on key or do you just have to know how to bring a vibe? Um, okay, now, 
I think you have to learn how to sing. I think you do have to learn how to sing. <laughs> I think <laughs> At least sing on key. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are so many machines in the studio that can help an artist that can't sing on key. Let's face it, you do have auto-tune and that sort of thing. Not this applies to Aaliyah. We're not talking about her anymore. Like, just so you know, I love Aaliyah. And I think, yes. I think she was a phenomenal, phenomenal artist. Um, yeah. Just off the next, off to the next topic. Um, there, I think what happens is when a person sings, obviously goes to sing live, then they have to confront whether or not they can sing on key or not. But as an overall package, we do have packages that are out there that are not phenomenal singers, but they can, they are great artists. They have that X factor, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I, look, I, I used to be, when I was younger, one of those people was like, oh my God, they can't even sing. Why are they so that? And I don't do that anymore. Like, I, <laughs> like, honestly, I don't do it anymore. And the reason I don't do it anymore is because of the conversation that I, went, that I was having, excuse me, with you about 15 minutes ago. Like, I can't deal with negativity anymore. Like, mm -hmm. at this point in my life and in my space and in my heart, and this is truly from the bottom of my heart, I walk only in positive conversation like i can't even like if i if i get really frustrated about something or if i see something that i feel is unfair i shut it off and i just walk mm -hmm. away or i don't i don't play it i don't i don't i don't question anymore like oh my god why them not me i don't do that mm -hmm. i don't do that i can't you can't afford to do it like it's just you can't look at someone else's journey and think I wish that was me, or that should be me, or I'm more talented, or I'm more beautiful. I'm why didn't it? that is not something. When you start getting into that game within yourself, you set yourself up for anger, hurt, failure. Don't do that. Don't don't do it to yourself. Walk only in. Okay, bless that. I'm 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 happy for them. I can't. I don't even get honestly into the judgment space anymore. I've been on massive stages where. I sang off key because I couldn't hear myself or because I was in a traumatic place in my own personal life and I just couldn't even get it together. And that's an awful place to be in. So you never know what someone is going through. So I don't judge people anymore. Like I just honestly, I don't know what the elements are. Like I was on X Factor stage and I didn't have an in ear monitor and the audience is screaming and I can't hear the track or I can't hear the band. And then it makes me look like I'm a horrible singer, right? All these other elements are there. So people are judging like, oh my God, can't she sing? She's singing off key. Like, and it's just so dark. You know what I mean? Yes, so yes. I don't even do that to other people because I don't want it to happen to me. Mm -hmm. So I do believe in manifesting. I believe in what you get, you give. Like, I'm a big believer in that now because I, I have my ass kicked. Life kicked my ass. And sometimes it takes that in order to either grow or you don't grow. You just keep suffering until you make it till you go to your grave and you just never learned the lesson. I know people like that too, but I'm not one of those people. Okay. I decided <laughs> to, <laughs> you know what I mean? I decided to change my life. Um, I, I dedicate my life to giving and helping and that's even in my music. And if I, if my story can inspire people, then I know that the reason that I went through all those dark times that I've been through, cause I've been through some darkness is only to be here now where I stand right now to inspire someone and let them know that if I make it, you can make it too. And that's the I, most important part for me. Absolutely. You know what? And I feel like that's such a dope testimony and this carries me into the next question that I want to ask you, you've been able to reinvent okay. yourself yes. over and over and over. And I feel like you've, you. you've, you've explained in a weird way longevity um, to a lot of these artists that burn out after one single, you just never hear from yes. them. So, you know, just with your group and then, you know, kind of like going through that and having such a massive success with that number three on Billboard and then kind of having a restart and being like, you know what, I'm going to go on X Factor. I actually yes. saw a clip of you on Sunday Best. See? Yes, I auditioned for Sunday Best. And they turned me down. Oh. Yeah, I, but you know what? I'm happy that they did. You see? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because had they said yes, I wouldn't have been on the X Factor stage. Okay. The voice turned me down, too. The lady at The Voice said, you don't need to sing no more. You can't sing. This was two months before I auditioned for X Factor. Oh. Okay. The, that, that person said... You are not a great singer. I, I suggest that you don't you don't do this. Okay. And I was like, wow. Now did now now when you heard that, did you know like she's really just hating? Like did you just like because 
No, I took it. I was like, oh my mm. God, this is, oh my God. I was bawling my eyes out. I walked out crying and thinking, oh my God, maybe she's right. Maybe that's why, I, maybe I never was like as big as whoever. Like, I just, I believed her. You know, I thought, okay, well, maybe people have lied to me all these years. Maybe that's why I'm not make. maybe that's what happened. I can't see. Right? And then one day I was sitting down and I was listening to these lectures called Your Wish Is Your Command by Kevin Trudeau on YouTube. And um, I was like, you know what? I can sing. I, I really, I can and I'm going to, and I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try one more time. And I wrote down, I want to sing for Simon Cowell. I put Simon's picture on my wall. And I just envisioned singing for him. And I knew that I was always too old for the for American Idol. Like it was always, always like a year or two. Like when they came out, I think I was like 27 or something. And I was just like, I was always a little bit too Oh, like one year too old for them, right? Okay, and I was just like, okay. And then obviously I got older, and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm this age gap is too much. I can't audition for them. But then I heard he was leaving um, to start his own show, mm -hmm. and my friend who lived in the UK, she was telling me about the X Factor, and the X Factor had been over there for many years. I think they had been there for like ten or fifteen years before they came to America, and so she was like, here, look at these YouTube videos. This is Simon's show in the UK. I knew he had been in America, obviously for American Idol for many years, and so they. When he quit American Idol, it was rumored that he was going to come back to America with X Factor. So my friends in the UK, who I, when because when I did my own thing in London, I had friends that were from the '90s that were still my friends who loved me, who kept encouraging me to sing. One lady who saw the show 36 times was like, "You have to sing, you have to sing," you know. And so she was like, "You need to see Simon Cowell because he had signed Susan Boyle at that point." And he, she was like, "Please just see when it's going." So I kept googling X Factor USA, and then finally one day I googled it. And the website came up and it was true. He was coming. And so I was like, okay. And it came up when the auditions were for that. And I was one of those people that went out there at 11 o'clock at night. Um, it was raining. It was, we were switching off, sleeping in our cars and seven o'clock in the morning, I was at the door um, auditioning for the X Factor. I stood, I was one of the, I think 223,000 people in America who auditioned for that show. Mm. And his producer, I, cause you have to do three auditions before you stand in front of Simon. So his producer loved me and the rest is history. Wow. And yeah. Just like that, you had a whole another career resurgence, fresh yeah. introduction to the world. And, yes. And, and, and then it took you to, to a whole new level. People were yes. just saying right here, I'll never forget your rendition of Purple Rain, my Thank favorite you. version. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you know, it's so cute because even now when people book me for concerts, they're always like, can you please sing Purple Rain? Um, thank you so much. <laughs> I see that from um, official Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. You know, when they told me they wanted me to sing Purple Rain, I was like, okay, I'm going to get eliminated because I had watched all the YouTube videos and I saw that women that sing for Bahrain, they never made, they never won. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to sing this song. And then oh, I so wait, they got, it. they had to pick, you, you, okay, so they picked the songs for y'all. Yeah. Oh. They give you a list of songs when you first come. Okay. For your first audition to see, so, okay, so it's three, so it's three, it's three auditions, right? The first one is like, you, you get the golden pass and then the second one, and then I say, so it's two. So it's two and then you see Simon. So the third one, you see him. So the first audition, they give you a list of songs to pick from. And I picked Natural Woman and Bruno Mars's, um, I forgot the other song, his, his up-tempo song back then in 2011. So I, um, I said, okay, I'm gonna sing Natural Woman and, or this song. So basically what happens is if you get up on stage and Simon doesn't like that song you've chosen, he makes you sing the other one. So that's that was what happened on that. On summertime, they gave me a list, but on um, Purple Rain, the, the judges' houses, no, they give you the song. Queen of the Night, they give you the song. All the songs that I sucked on, I was just like, <laughs> I didn't pick these songs. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when they when they're up in there, they're like you you chose this song, I'm like this is such produced BS. Like I didn't pick this song. And then also, can I? I kept begging, kept begging the producers for an in ear monitor, and they wouldn't give me one. 
you know and i was just like because the, the the audience is very small it's like a 300 seat theater and once the once you come out on stage and the music comes on they're going crazy because by the time you get to live shows you're really famous because they you go through all those other dishes right my first live show was after purple rain so it's just like the, the audience is super super loud and i couldn't hear myself um but anyway, I got off. I got off track. Anyway, yes, they picked the songs, but they accused the artists of picking the songs. It's just not. There's just so much behind the scenes it's stuff that it's just like, Jesus help me. Um, but whatever, well, you know, it's fine. You giving us you giving us the Zap exclusive right now. Yeah, the Zap okay. <laughs> definitely. I definitely did. <laughs> but so let me ask you the first the first one the first X Factor you come mm -hmm. out there and yeah, Purple Rain is wow. Like Thank you, you you really did. Uh, your thing with that Thank um you. And you were able to be a finalist on the show yeah. so let's wake up on the day of the final the wake up you're waking up and you're here and you're, you're a finalist. yeah yeah Do you think like oh shit i could possibly win this show like i could wow. be or did you even think to yourself how did i even get here like what no. was the <laughs> You would think that that's the experience that someone could have. Um, okay, so just to go back a little bit, when they gave me Purple Rain, I did not want to sing Purple Rain. I didn't even know what Purple Rain meant. I was like, what does this song even mean? Like, I don't want to sing this song. And then I went, <laughs> I went and did some research, and um, I made some phone calls, and I found out that Purple Rain means God's love raining down on you. Mm. So I never meant to cause you any sorrow. I never meant to cause you any pain. I only want to see God's love raining down on you. Mm. Right? And I, I was like, oh, okay. So that, that changes this song for me completely. If I sing it from, I only want to see God's love raining down on you place, then it turns into a spiritual movement song. It turns into a gospel song for me. So that's <laughs> why I think people feel so moved by that performance because I knew exactly what it meant. When it said, I never want to be your weak in love, or I only want to be your, your friend. I only want to see God's love running, running down on you. I want to see you in your best. I want you to be loved by the best. I want God's, to, I want God's love to reign all over you. When I sang it from there, it shocked the world. When I tell you, People were moved by that song. This is 11, this is, what, 11 years ago, and I still hear about Purple Rain. People mm. got moved by that song. It was a spiritual movement, right? Absolutely. So that moment for me was that epic because when you talk about the anointing and we talk about God moving through somebody, that was a movement of God, right? So people felt that. Now, moving on, there were very... I had very dark moments doing X Factor and I'll just be transparent. It was very hard. It was hard because um, I lost friends. There were people that were my friends for many years that they were jealous. I got verified on Twitter and my best friend of 20 years stopped being my friend because I got verified and she wasn't. What? Yeah, like that kind of stuff. Silly stuff. I had another friend of mine call me and said, you know, I told, um, I won't say her name, I told this other girl that she needs to come get you because I think you're getting a little bit beside yourself. And what? I was just like, this is the kind of stuff people were saying to me during, this, during, my, during the show. Like during, right? And then I got reported by TMZ or one of those tabloid um, uh, pages that I was a diva. Like crazy. And I was just like, what? Like who's, what is happening? And then my dad died. Mm. You know, it just... It became so heavy, very heavy. So I never, you know, I had written down, I want to win. I want to I want to stand in elevation. I was very light going in. Like, it was very much a game. But then I pulled in and attracted so much negativity and so much darkness because the journey became very heavy. I was breastfeeding. I was going through, um, what do you call it when you have a baby? It's like pros, pros, postpartum depression. Postpartum depression. I, I was, my daughter was five months old. I was, I wasn't sleeping. I was worried all the time. Am I going to win? If I win the $5 million, how my life could change. Like it turns into this other thing. You can't, you can't win a competition like that. Yeah. You expect the, the winner won $5 million cash. Yeah. They, she won a million dollars a year for five years. So when you have that kind of pressure and, and it looks like you're set up to fail, 
and your friends are turning their backs on you and it's just like you can't sleep and you have this all these things that are happening hormonally i was a mess so i never thought oh i could win this i was i was i was too tired i was too stressed out i was too oh my god how am i gonna sing this song or what's am i gonna get this is it gonna be on key like it was too much mm. you can't you can't win like that <laughs> you can't win like you can't no. you can't win like that that's just forget that game you just can't win the game of life like that okay that x factor was like an example of how you don't live your life you're it's gonna like, be under criticism it's like hunger games you're gonna be under criticism people are gonna criticize you they're gonna judge you they're gonna they're gonna talk about you they're gonna make up stories I had one of the producers say, do not look at social media. And I could not keep my, I was obsessed with hearing what people were saying about me, obsessed. I was looking at Twitter all the time, like, what are they saying? And as soon as I, I would get like hundreds and thousands of, oh my gosh, she's amazing. And that one person that says she sucks would ruin my life. Mm. You were too connected. Very, too much. So I could never, I never was at a place where it's like, oh my God, what if I win? I went in that way. I went in, I went in like dream board. Picture of my Grammys, picture of Simon, picture of when I talked to Oprah. Like it was just, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm gonna win this. And then when I got in it, it sucked me up. And I was just like, oh my goodness, this is not good. And then it just was like back to back traumatic events after that. Yeah. So and now, digging into my past, it was crazy. Wow, wow. Okay, so let me yeah. ask you. So now you are a finalist. So that means yeah. you. You were the you were top ten. Top ten. So then now, how did your life change after that? Like, and and and, and I'm something that I'm sure the fans actually want to know too. Were you getting paid during that time? Like, do you get the Yeah, you get you get to a certain point when you start getting paid. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't your work wasn't in vain. Okay. No. No. Yeah. Depos deposit that check. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so then now. How did your life change from X Factor moving into what your next phase is going to be? Um, well, like I said, it was a little bit dark, but then it was still great because people knew me. I had a new generation of people who knew Stacey Francis, right? So that was really awesome because so now it's not just the 90s people in my age group that knew of like that new Jack Swing era. But now I'm totally refreshed with X Factor fans, which mm -hmm. is still the, the case. Like people like younger people and all around like people in Brazil are like massive fans, you know, and it's because of X Factor. So that in that case was very positive. It was amazing. It was it was it completely catapulted me to another level. Um because, you know, like this person that says, oh my God, X Factor, I'm sorry, Purple Rain is, you know, I have 18 year olds, 17 year olds, you know, I have 20 year olds, 21 year olds that are like, oh my God, she's amazing. Right? But that would never know me, obviously from the nineties, there was no social media, there was no, you know what I mean? There was no internet. So it's very cool that I got a whole new generation of, of people. So in that way, it was phenomenal. And it's something that I don't regret doing i love it and i always tell people tell people you know when you talk about um constantly uh reinvent, reinventing yourself as an artist you have got to do that you got to do that you know like i know people from the 90s that won't get a twitter page they won't get an instagram they won't it's like girl you ain't gonna get paid you ain't getting nothing you know you know what i mean it's just like it's crazy it's like and, they, and the resentment like Nah, I'm not messing with that stuff. It's like, okay, well, you're just going to stay broke and nobody's going to ever know you. It's not just, you, know I mean? you, don't get you, you understand what I'm saying? Because this new generation, you guys are on social media. You know, and we didn't have that. So, okay, it's a blessing. And it's also the blessing of, for new artists, you don't have to wait around anymore. You can put your music out yourself. Go to Spotify. Go to SoundCloud. Get your music out. Do your thing, right? And so I always tell people in my age group, it's like, Girl, look, lace front wigs, <laughs> lashes, you know, all the stuff that we didn't have back then. We have this ability now to, when you look at like Mary J. Blige and Little Kim and all these girls, you know, looking at them like they look like they're 20 years old and they're yeah. doing music for this generation. They don't give a damn their age. They're not thinking about that past stuff. They're like, okay, this is the new stuff that we're doing. Okay. And this is what I, you understand? And this is what I try to tell, you know, artists that, didn't make it as big or Mary or little Kim or whatever, but still want to sing and they still want to do their thing. I'm like, go do a photo shoot, get some pictures out there, do your thing, you know, always promote yourself, help people, help, 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 help. I can't 
scream it loud enough. Like, stop thinking about yourself so much and start helping people. And before you know it, the universe is going to bless you. You're yeah. going to be blessed. Yeah. So we you talk about reinvent, it's like, okay, well, why do you look so good, Stacey? Because I sleep well, I eat well, I, I work out, I, you know, I'm, I feel good because I help a lot of people every day, you know? And it's just like, that is the thing that I've tapped into myself. I've tapped into that power within me to do that and make a big difference in the world. Absolutely. Okay, make sure I take your notes. Make, a lot yeah. Of, I see a lot of artists actually tapping in right now. What up, Nelson? I see you. What up, Calvin? I see you as well. Um, And, 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 and Stacey, you got your fans all riled up in here. Okay. <laughs> Um, they really are. They say happy Thanksgiving to you. you um, and they say peace and blessings. Um, you too. Biggest Miss Stacy Living Legend ex girlfriend group was ahead of its time. All it right? was. It really uh, truly was. I truly think that ex girlfriend was ahead of its time. We used to dance 10 hours a day. You know, we used to dance and rehearse 10 hours a day. We used to sing and dance and. The music was phenomenal. I mean, you can still go to Apple Music and hear the music, but I do believe that it was ahead of its time. I do believe that, unfortunately, it did not get the credit that it was due, but um, it was a great training ground, and it, it's still, today, people are inspired by that music and they're inspired by the group, so there you go. I was I was jamming to it before we got on here and just thank you. It's the, the old school vibe. That, that yeah, right? Really it's so good, right? The vocals, all of it, it, it's nostalgic. So yeah, somebody yeah. asked me if I would do some tours with them. I said, hell yeah, I will. Okay, would, yeah, would y'all come back? Yeah, would y'all come back and do a reunion? Like, what's that? Absolutely, absolutely. One of the girls actually is a makeup artist. She does like really big movies and stuff. Um, but I, I called her the other day. I was like, you come sing with us, right? She was like, yeah, we would do it. Okay, I think yeah. everybody would be everybody would be pleasantly surprised to see y'all. Yeah, it would be great, right? Definitely. Y'all can jump on some shows with, with, with some of these groups, you know. Yeah, groups. that would be amazing. We would do yeah. that. Would you guys come to see us? I wonder if the fans would come check it out. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, well, let's, get in, let's get into Stacey Francis right now. What is Stacey Francis working on right now? Like, do we Can we expect new music? I do have some new music. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm so excited about it. I wish I could play a little bit of it for you. I When I tell you... I am so excited about this music. Like, I just, oh, my God. It's so inspiring. And you're going to dance to it here. I'm going to play a little bit of just a little bit of this track. Okay. Oh, you're giving us the exact exclusive. I'm going to give you a little bit. Just a okay. little bit of this, this one. Can you hear it? I hear it. Okay. When you feel like losing hope because you've had enough. Mm, okay. It's not over. <laughs> it's not over. Okay, that's it. Oh, first of all, fuego, fuego, fuego. My <laughs> emojis are coming in, okay? Yeah, right? Okay, wait. I'm just going to just give you a little bit of this one, just the chorus on this. Okay, give me that. Give it to us. I'm my own hero. Okay. Let's go. I'm my own hero. Okay, let's go. Okay. <laughs> all right. We go. We got, that's, all, that's all I'm giving you. Listen, you're giving us the exclusive, and the chat is going crazy. Everybody's throwing you mad fire emojis in love right now. <laughs> all right? So, listen, you got to, first of all, I don't know if you know, but I'm a choreographer and a director. I dance. That's what I do. So, there you go. I'm going to be calling you to help me with the videos. We got to okay. get some videos out there. Listen. Where are you I, based? I'm in, I'm in Brooklyn. Okay, okay. Nice. Nice. I'm in Brooklyn. So, but. Nice. What part of Brooklyn? I was just in Brooklyn. Crown Heights. Well, Crown Heights, I have a studio. My studio's in Crown Heights, and then I live, okay. I stay in Bed-Stuy. Okay, well, I was in Brownsville, East New York for the last month. Oh, okay. Oh, I you, was down oh, the street. You, you was down the street. And you know what's <laughs> up. You on the block. Oh, yeah, I was. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I was. Listen, 
She like, listen, listen. Now I, I know what's up. I'm from New York, New York. I'm from Brooklyn. Yeah, for you know, sure. You know, like I feel like Stacy. Thank you so much for coming on here. You were so dope. And I you are like, such a sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. You're such it's a so sweetheart. You feel <laughs> your your energy feels great. Um, I really enjoy being here. I feel like I just kept talking and talking and talking, but but I I do that when I'm comfortable with someone. So thank you for making this space very comfortable for me. Of course, thank you for coming on and just being yourself and giving us gems. And you're not gonna be a stranger. We're gonna have you on here when you drop these singles. We're gonna be back on here talking about it, and we're gonna okay. get the videos ran up. Okay. I look forward to that. Good I luck to, with you to you and everything you're doing. Okay. Thank you so much, Stacy. We're not gonna be a stranger. We're gonna connect. Okay, I love it. All right, we're have talking to you later. Yeah. All right, y'all. So that was Stacey Francis, everybody. Make sure y'all get zapped in with her. Tonight has been a crazy night. Ooh, I'm tired. And Stacey has been an inspiration. I'm about to definitely get my brain unwind from this interview and, and process. Because I feel like she said a lot of heavy stuff that make sure y'all take that all home and really process. Everything is a spiritual warfare. And the energy you put out is going to be the energy you get back. That's the biggest thing that I took away from tonight. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all for us. Another dope Zap exclusive. Volume 3 will be out tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on my Instagram. And Volume 2 is out right now. Run that up. Make sure y'all follow me on all social media platforms and hit my new website, theonlyjersey.com. It's live right now. I'm tired. I am out. I love y'all for real. Deuces! <laughs>